What's this? Ooh. <laughs> nice. Wait a minute. What? What is this? It's an imposter. <laughs> this is the B-Link GTR 9. And as you can see, it's very similar to another piece of gear that's quite familiar to us, the Mac Studio. Yeah, on the outside, it might look the same, but on the inside, it's very different. See, the B-Link GTR 9 has the most powerful x86 APU chip on the planet right now. That would be the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. The same one we've seen in the GMK Tech Evo X2 earlier that I covered. And also the same one that we've seen in the framework desktop. Yeah, this is the desktop, but it's the version that's you can build yourself. There's a bunch of other OEMs that have that chip inside. It's a very powerful chip, but they're not all equal. Well, let's face it, this little mini PC is pretty good. Look at the I.O. on it. Compared to the Mac Studio, we've got two 10 gig NICs. We've got the same Mickey Mouse power supply, internal power supply, which means no brick. I love that. It also has USB-A, two of those, and HDMI. But this one has a DisplayPort connector, which the Mac Studio does not. On the front, we have an SD card reader and a power button with a thumbprint reader. However, the Mac Studio, this one is the M3 Ultra. It does have four Thunderbolt 5 ports, which this one does not. And that's a big, big miss. But it does have that 360 microphone array, which is pretty cool. So it's an interesting machine. And I think most people are gonna be interested in this machine for its AI capabilities, specifically because it has 128 gigs of memory that's shared with the CPU and the GPU for under $2,000. Yeah, that's still pretty expensive, but 128 gigabytes considering we have 128 gigabyte machines for four thousand dollars like this djx spark and we have this very heavy mac studio which i happen to get from the recertified store is that what they call it whatever they call it for over three thousand dollars and this is the cheapest one okay so price wise the b link is actually pretty good deal but that's not where the story ends i think most people are going to be getting this because they want to be able to run local ai local llms image processing image generation things like that so aside from all the externals and all the capabilities i'm going to focus only on that in this review and if you're curious about this machine in general or how it compares with the other ones let me know in the comments down below and maybe i'll do more videos on this one this hotel just told me just use the wi-fi no login needed open network lots of laptops <laughs> no thanks so i flip on surfshark before i type a single command one click and my git pushes container pulls and package installs go through an AES-256 encrypted tunnel. Clean web swats the junk, ads, trackers, the usual suspects. Meanwhile, Surfshark keeps no logs, independently audited, and the servers are RAM only, which means reboots, wipes them clean. The best perk? Unlimited devices. This MacBook, my phone, and any of my other devices are all covered under one plan. SSH into the lab feels a lot less sketchy on public Wi-Fi now. Head to surfshark.com slash alexiskin. You'll get four extra months free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Link down below. Protect your traffic and keep building. Now back to the video. Mac Studio up on top, B-Link GTR 9 at the bottom. I got LM Studio running on both, and we've got the same prompt, design a scalable web application architecture for an e-commerce platform. It's a medium-sized architecture prompt that I have out of my collection of prompts. We'll get into more prompts in a bit. Let's start it off nice and easy. Quen. 3, 4B. Now, Mac Studio is running the MLX version because that's what's optimized for running on Apple Silicon, so why not? Let's run the most optimized thing. Load model on both, and boom. Let's go. <laughs> I think that these are both acceptable results as far as speed goes, but I think it's pretty obvious that Mac Studio is way, way faster. And that Mac Studio is the M3 Ultra with 96 gigs of RAM. It's the lowest variant. They go up to 512 gigabytes. We got 144 tokens per second on that. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm going to stop this one because it just keeps going. 52 tokens per second here. So I'd say quite a bit of a difference there. Okay, okay, Alex, you're not being fair. You're comparing Apple Silicon's best chip right now to AMD's best mobile chip. But I wanted you to know where we are right now. 
as far as what's available right now for these form factor machines, small form factor. Yes, Apple Silicon machine is much more expensive than this one. But how does this AMD chip stack up against the other AMD options that are out there, which are substantially cheaper than Mac Studios? And for those of you that are curious about this, I am running Vulkan Llama CPP. And on AMD, you basically have three options. You can run CPU, which is going to be really slow. You don't want to do that. If it runs on a CPU, it's not using the GPU power to run in parallel. That's an oversimplification, but for this video, it'll do. We also have Rockham, which is AMD's API to be able to run LLMs and image generation models on AMD hardware. And we also have Vulkan, which is kind of a third party API, but it runs across multiple platforms. And it happens to be one of the best ones right now. That's what I ran it on right now. If I run this on Rockham, well, let's just take a look. So I got 52.8 tokens per second using Vulkan. And if I do the exact same prompt using Rockham, let's see what we get. This is the latest LM Studio as of right now, using the latest Rockham libraries and latest Vulkan libraries. We get 60 tokens per second. So a little bit better. I'm actually surprised here because Rockham didn't do so well when it comes to larger models. So this is a very small 4 billion parameter model, but I did test this on a few of these larger models. And to save you some time, I actually did my automation script against a bunch of different machines, including this one and including the M3 Ultra. So let's take a look at that. All right, here we go. Now, in case you're not familiar with the way the AI 395 Plus, Max Plus, Ryzen, Strix Halo machine <laughs> runs, you can basically choose how much is allocated to the GPU from the BIO setting. You can set it to auto, which on some machines you can do, but on other machines you can't. On this machine, you cannot. You can either choose 64 or 96. So here are both options. And look at the difference here. 96 gives us, that's the blue one, by the way, that gives us a lot more performance than 64. For example, that medium architecture prompt that I just ran, 72 tokens per second for Quen 3 Coder 30B. And on the 64 gigabyte setting, we got 67 tokens per second. So quite a bit less with a bit more variance too between the runs. By the way, the script that I wrote runs multiple times and then takes the average and then has a standard deviation that shows up like this little bar right here. The extra long programming prompt which is about 30,000 tokens for a prompt. Yeah, it's big. We still have 22 tokens per second for the 96 gigabyte setting, and we have 13.9 tokens per second for the 64 gigabyte setting. A big difference. You know what else makes a big difference? Right now, I'm on Linux here. I'm on Fedora 42, but I also ran these on Windows. And wouldn't you know, something you might already kind of suspect, yeah, it's faster on Fedora 42 than on Windows. So the red one here is Fedora 42. We got for that medium architecture prompt, 70 tokens per second and 65.9 tokens per second for the same exact model, for the same exact prompt on Windows. And you can pretty much see that all throughout. By the way, these are available on my GitHub, at least the data. You still have to run the script to generate the charts. Now, as far as the machine goes, the machine came with Windows 11 pre-installed and runs beautifully well. It's Everything's fine with it. Although I did find a couple of blog posts saying that the Nix needed to be upgraded firmware issues you can always upgrade that i'm talking about hardware only here and the chip all those other firmware and software issues can be mitigated but i'd say if you're going to be releasing a product you probably want to check that first make sure you do a lot of testing i think they were in a rush to get this out and yeah they were probably one of the last companies to get a machine out but they did and it's out and now they just need to update some of the firmware. I'd say the Windows implementation runs really well. However, the Fedora implementation had some quirks. My mouse would die once in a while, I'd had to reboot. The screen would freeze once in a while, I had to reboot. I'm sure that's all gonna be taken care of, but I thought I would mention it. Now, this is the interesting part. How does this compare with the other machines that have the exact same chip? I'm gonna start off with a negative, okay? Forgive me. And yes, I went into the BIOS. I set it to performance mode, best performance, as I did on all the other machines. But this one is 
consistently the loudest machine in the room. And if you're sitting right next to it, you're going to hear it. However, that is not without its benefits because it's also the fastest. Let me show you. So here's Quen 3 coder 30 billion again, 64 gigabytes allocated for the GPU, which means the other 64 are allocated for the system memory. Here's the 96 gigabyte allocation, does a little bit better. And let's take a look at the framework desktop, which I really like. It works amazingly well. Everything just works. It's almost a silent machine. I really liked it. I did a whole review on it. You can check it out. I'll link to it down below. However, if we take a look at the tokens per second, if we only take a look at that, then this machine blows it out of the water. Here's a 64 gigabyte GPU allocation for the framework desktop in orange. You can see that the B-Link one is way faster. And here's the 96 gigabyte allocation. It's a little bit faster than orange, but still the B-Link machine destroys it, especially over here. Medium architecture prompt. Again, the B-Link GTR 9, this machine right here, 72 tokens per second for this model. Framework desktop, 51 tokens per second. I mean, those are both good numbers, but still you can see it's pretty consistent that the B-Link machine beats the framework machine, except the really long prompts. Over there, the framework machine actually does really well. Let's take a look at the int 8 quantization. The other one was int 4 quantization. So here we're doing pretty well too. Medium architecture, we've got 48 tokens per second at 64 gigabyte allocation. Framework desktop still does a little bit worse, 37.7 tokens per second. The GMK Tech Evo X2, which does a little bit better than the framework one, quite a bit better in some of these cases, but still, 46 tokens per second for medium architecture, which is a bit lower than the B-Link desktop. And that one was the fastest until now. Now, the M3 Ultra. Let's take a look at that one. Boom. <laughs> yeah, you can see that that just uh, different, different scale here. We're working with a different level. Medium architecture for that particular prompt is 72 tokens per second in int 8 quantization. Now, a couple of other interesting points I want to point out here about this machine. GPT OSS 20 billion. It's a model that's pretty popular. It's by OpenAI. It ran it under Vulkan, but it would not work under Rockham. And it's only on this machine that it wouldn't do it. It ran it fine on the framework desktop. It ran it fine on the GMK desktop. Wouldn't work here. Here's a chart in case you're interested. GPT OSS 20B. This is under Vulkan and it does quite well except the really long prompts where it just says "Meh, i don't think i'm gonna do that one the extra long repo prompt actually now that i look at it <laughs> it, it does do pretty well across most of these medium-sized prompts so not bad just rock them for some reason would not work very well. Now, I know that Rockham works on this chip and it works quite well. In fact, you can check Donato Capitella's channel. He's got, I'll link to it down below. He's got a couple of videos. He's built a few different toolboxes to be able to containerize these different APIs and run them and run benchmarks on them. And they work very well. I've already shown this on my framework video. You can check that out. But for a lot more detail, see his channel. So overall, this machine does pretty well. There are some quirks, but I think that's just BIOS version and firmware and software related which will probably be ironed out uh, month two, I don't know, but they'll be ironed out. I think that they tuned this machine pretty high. That's why it performs so well, but also you get a lot of noise level, so keep that in mind. Overall, nice looking machine, I would say, wouldn't you? All right, let me know what you think about this machine, whether you'd pick it up or not, and also check out that framework desktop video right over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.